lot a lot of that uh, people are looking at number one what we're saying and they're looking at our action and our reactions to thing since we say we're believers so we need to make sure that what we're saying and what we're doing is by faith and it is lining up with the word of God that it'll be an incursion with somebody else and somebody else can say okay I know we got the same situation going on. Now tell me what you're doing because you're at, your reaction is a whole lot of different from what mine is. And then that way I can tell them about the goodness of God. Amen. All right. Okay. Um, Proverbs 13 and 3. Listen at this. He that keepeth or guards his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction or ruin. So he that keepeth or guards his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction or ruin. So we want to make sure that our mouths are lining up with the word of God and what we say we believe according to scripture. All right. I want my life to be a life that's lived fully. Um, and so for me, in order for me to do that, I can't talk all the negative stuff. I've got to stay with what God says. Amen. All right. OK, I want to do um, maybe one other point. Is that I have time for one other point? OK. OK. Um, I'll give you a couple of things because these are things that Father's really been dealing with my heart about um, as we talk about moving forward and, and we're strengthening our relationship with him. Um, let me give you a couple of more things, but I just want to, I, I think we're just going to go to one of them um, in, this, in this session, okay? Um, we have to stop the fear. We need to watch our mouths. We need to do what we say we believe. And so I'm going to give you just the, um, the scripture and you can go and look at that later. In James 1, through 26, it says, it, this is where James talks about being a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. So we're going to have to practice what we say we believe. We got to do the word. I don't care what's going on. We still got to do the word. Okay. The word of God is the only thing that's going to bring us out of any situation and any circumstance. The scripture says that he heaven and earth is going to pass away. He said, but my word will stand forever. So I want to hold on to that. That's going to be forever. Okay. And um, so we're going to have to do what we say we believe, and that is doing the word. And when we do the word of God, it causes us not to forget and not to deceive ourselves. We don't want to be self-deceived, all right? I can't practice what everybody else is doing. I got to practice unless they're doing what the word says, because I have to practice what the word of God says. We've got to be a doer of the word, okay? Um, Pastor Oliver, in one of his teachings, he also talked to us about building ourselves up. We have to keep ourselves built up. And one of the ways that we can do that is by praying in the Holy Ghost. All right. Um, and so we want to make sure that we keep ourselves built up in God. All right. Uh, we have to rest. We got to enter into that rest. And in Hebrews 4, it talks about us laboring to enter into rest. God has already provided rest for us, but we have to work to get into that rest because y'all with the pressures of life um, and things sometimes hit us unexpectedly. Um, we're going to have to get ourselves in a place of rest. Because if we don't get into that place, we're going to be worried. We're going to be frustrated um, and all kind of things will be going on. And so father wants us to get into rest. You can look at read, write this down and you can go back and look at it later because it's all of this is so good. Hebrews three, 18 through 19. Then go to uh, chapter four verses. Just read all of chapter four. It would be good to read all of chapter three and all of chapter four. And it talks about the rest of God. All right. All right. Um, this is the, uh, the, the, the other point that I wanted to get to. Um, and I think um, when we were talking about our mouths, we're to be thankful. We need to we need to actually uh, manage our thankfulness. I mean, we need to be thanking God uh, all the time. In um, uh, Thessalonians, it talked about um, in all things, be thankful. 
Okay, not for all things, but in all things and wherever we find ourselves, be thankful. Give God thanks for there's something in that that you can thank God for. Okay, all right. But this is the the point I want. And I really want us to get this. We need to check out our view. We need to check out our view. I want to go to Exodus, um, the 17th chapter. Verses 8 through 15. Do I have time to do that? Okay. Um, Chapter uh, Exodus 17. We're going to look at, and we've read this story before. I'm sure um, all of us have heard this. All of us probably at some point in time um, have looked at this. But I want to, um, I want us to go back and look at this again. In um, chapter 17 of Exodus. Okay. And of course, we're talking about uh, Moses and we're talking about the children of Israel. I want to begin in verse. uh, Let's begin with verse eight. Okay. now we're talking about moving forward. We're talking about trusting God in times of uncertainty and moving forward in that. Okay. Um, and this right here, I want us to make sure that we keep this in mind. This is so important. Y'all check out your view. In in, uh, Ephesians, it talks about us being seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay. It talks about uh, us being translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And so our view is should be totally different from the world's view. All right. So in Exodus 17, and I'll skip around a little bit, but we're going to start with verse eight. It says, then came Amulek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with uh, Amulek. And Moses, Aaron, and her went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. When he held up his hands, Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amulek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, they held up his hands, the one on the one side and the one on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Okay? And Joshua discomfited Amulek and his people with the edge of the sword. Hallelujah. So we see here in this battle, When they were coming up against Amulek, that Moses had a battle plan. So Moses um, took her, took her, what was the other guy's name? Aaron and her, they went up on the hill. Now the the battle is going down in, in this part. And so they go up on the hill and it said that Moses has the rod of God in his hand, right? And so as long as he held, held up his hands and the rod of God was over the banner of God over them, then they prevail. But you know, anytime you hold up your hands for any length of time, they're going to get tired, right? So when he um, got tired and his hands came down, they began to lose the battle, right? So what is my point in all of this? If we spend more time focused on the thing we're fighting Then on God that we're appealing to, don't be surprised if that battle doesn't go in your direction, right? So we have to keep our eyes and we have to keep our focus on God. What was happening in the midst of, uh, you know, what was going on in the battle, it really had more to do with what was actually happening where Moses was. And let's just say in the spirit that where Moses was, this is where really the battle was going on. If whatever happened where Moses was and holding up the rod of God, whatever happened there, it actually, um, it actually had the action going down on the, the, 
down in the battle, okay? And so actually what was happening, let's say in the spirit, because y'all, that's where our battle is. Our battle is in the spirit. Our battle is not with flesh and blood. It's not. It's not with flesh and blood. Our battle is in the spirit, and, and the scripture tells us who our battle is with, okay? So what was happening on the ground with the enemy was not being determined by what was happening on the ground because they, in that fight that was going on, the actual fight, the turn of the fight was all um, um, contingent on what was going on with Moses up on the hill. And so when Moses' hands was up and the, the rod of God was up, they prevailed. When his hands came down, they, they uh, amulet, the enemy began to win the battle. And so for us, we have to keep our focus on God. We have to hear from him and we have to do what he says for us to do. I wonder how many of us in the midst of this crisis actually pressed into God and what his battle plan was and all this, that he would reveal that to those that needed to know that he would reveal that battle plan rather than down on the ground, just kind of around with everybody else complaining and worried and concerned and, and all of these things. But the battle actually is being won in another place. Y'all we have to actually Get before God, and I mean to begin to decree and declare what his word has said. You know, we can go before God and say, Father, you said you never leave us. You never forsake us. These are the things that we want to be declaring. We want to be declaring the wisdom of God. Father God, we need your wisdom in this time. Show us what to do. And it's not just this time. I'm talking any time. Even when things are going good, we need the wisdom of God. In our daily lives, we need the wisdom of God. We need to know what God is saying. We need his direction and we need his insight, y'all. Because a lot of what we're seeing with our eyes doesn't line up with the word of God, right? And if we're going to be moved by that, if we're going to always have our eyes on the natural have our eyes on situation and circumstances, have our eyes on people and what they're doing. If you're going to stay that low, you ain't going to go very far, far, but we got to keep our eyes on him in Colossians three. It says that if we then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. All right. Keep our focus on him. Okay, that's what we desire to do. And God can give us in any situation, any circumstance, give us a battle plan. God can give us the exact word that we are to declare, the, the, the exact word that we can place in our heart, meditate on that word, and then speak it forth from our mouths. He can do that. All right. But we're going to have to give him space to do that. We're going to have to um, uh, cultivate that relationship with him, uh, spending that time with him, um, praying in the word. I mean, whatever we have to do, we need to get it done so that the, the things that are going on in the earth realm, we as believers, we can turn it. We can turn it by crying out to God. We can turn it by what we are decreeing and what we are declaring. And a lot of times we just kind of we, we just kind of let things go um, and, and think, you know, everything's just, just going to work out. But there is a realm of the spirit. And as we as believers and as kingdom citizen, we're to bring on the scene. We're to decree, declare what God has said, just like Jesus did. Got the plan, got what to say and, and how to say it, and then began to do that. Just simply doing what we hear Father telling us to do and what we see him doing. All right. Okay. It's my time out. It's not. Okay, good. All right. I'm doing good. All right. Listen at this. We are always to be thankful. In 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. In the King James Version. It says. Now thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. That was our next point. Thankfulness. 
We have to be thankful. We should be thankful. You know, God has brought us from such a long way. I mean, you can think back uh, to your life. Um, before you knew God, you can think back and just look at where God brought you from. We are always to be thankful. I think a lot of times we'll, we get to a place because, you know, things are moving smoothly or whatever. And we, we, we just actually forget what God really has done in our lives. God has brought all of us from a place. So, um, second Corinthians said, it says, now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh and manifest maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. I love it. But thanks be unto God. Hallelujah. Which always 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 causes us to triumph in Christ. He always causes us to triumph. But you know, there's no triumph without the battle. I mean, you know, um, he always causes us to triumph. I don't care what the battle is. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what the circumstance is. God, he always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus, because actually Jesus has already done it all. He's already paid the price for it all. Okay. In, um, uh, first Corinthians 15 and 57, it says, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So when anything that we are um, challenged with, we got to look at it. And I go back to the viewpoint of this. We have to look at it that I'm not trying to get the victory. I'm not fighting to get the victory. I'm, I'm actually, my standpoint is from the place of victory. So victory is already mine. All right. It already belongs to me. Okay, so I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting from the place of victory. Okay, because it says, thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the victory has already been decided. The victory is already ours. So whatever we have to walk through, we have to keep that perspective that victory belongs to me. Victory is already mine. Jesus has already won the victory. All right. Okay. And then we got to get out of ourselves. We can't think that um, we have all the answers because basically we don't have answers. <laughs> we need to be getting our answers and our direction from God. Okay. So we have to come out of ourselves. We, um, we got to totally, totally rely on, on God. I got to I got to know that without him I can't do anything. That he is my life. That he is the length of my days. That he cares for me, he loves me uh, more than I can even imagine, right? So I can't get this this puffed up attitude that I I can work this one out. I can work this out. God, I really don't need you in this. I need him all the time. And so we have to come out of ourselves and realize huh, we need God. All right. And then um, we'll look at one more place. Let's go to Colossians three. And we'll stop with this. Colossians three. Hallelujah. Colossians 3, and we'll look at <clears throat> verse 15. Colossians 3, and we'll look at verse 15. Listen at this. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And so we want to make sure that we stay in that place of thankfulness. Let that peace rule in our hearts to which we were called in one body and be thankful. I think, uh, you know, we should wake up in the morning just being thankful. Father, thank you for, for today. Thank you for letting me live. Thank you for my eyes being open today, Father. Thank you for life. Thank you for help. You know, all of those things that we know that Father is doing for us, we need to remain in that attitude of thankfulness and that attitude of gratefulness. So in all that has been said, in trusting God in uncertain times, and, and I want to put, um, uncertainty, uncertain time, even in good times. And as we move forward, we want to make sure y'all, we, we want to make sure that we, uh, at any point in time that we not operate in fear. We got to stop the fear. Whenever it comes, we got to make sure we identify it and we stop it. All right. We need to watch our mouths with those things that are coming out of our mouths. We need to watch our mouths. We need to do what we say we believe, and that is doing the word of God, as he tells us to do, always doing the word, right? We need to rest in him. And I told you about the rest. You need to go to Hebrews 3 and 4 and just really meditate in that. We need to keep ourselves built up, not only building ourselves up, but make sure that we stay built up in him. We need to check out our view. My view is, is, is as a believer is different from somebody who doesn't know God. And if we will keep our perspective, if we would keep our mind stayed on him, began to decree and declare from the heavenly places where we are actually seated with Christ Jesus. And actually, if you keep your perspective, correct, everything else that's going on on the ground, we got to understand that what's going on, on the ground really is dictated by what's going on in the spirit. And if we'll do our part in the spirit, Father, take care. It'll change whatever's going on on the lower level. OK, and then also be thankful. Amen. All right. Well, my time is up. Um, we thank you um, for those of you that. Um, are here and those that you have viewed in we just thank you tonight I pray that you've gotten something from the word of God father we just bless you tonight we thank you for those things that have been shared father and we ask you Lord God to just enlighten us the more we thank you for the eyes of our understanding being flooded with light we thank you father for giving unto each one of us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him father we thank you Holy Spirit that you are a teacher that you would take these things that have been ministered and further minister to our hearts and father god we thank you for everything that you've done for us father we thank you for your goodness your mercy and your grace and father we bless you tonight for the word for those things that have been shared and we give you the praise in jesus name amen so if you're here or you're listening in tonight and you have never received jesus christ as your lord and savior we want to invite you to do that. Um, this is where all of this starts. That is with receiving Jesus as Lord. He is Lord. Um, he's just waiting for you to receive. All right. He's already done everything that needs to be done. And all he needs is a response from you. Right. So if you don't uh, know him, if you have never uh, made that uh, confession of faith, and it's a simple thing of if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you want to make that confession with your mouth, you can do that. And according to the scripture, you will be saved. So follow me in this. Say, God, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that he died for my sin. That he took upon himself everything that I am, that I might become everything that he is. And I make that confession with my mouth. 
Jesus, I decree and declare and invite you to be Lord of my life. I receive you now. I ask you to fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. I receive from you. And Father, I thank you tonight that I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. So we thank you for um, just um, being with us tonight. Um, you can go to our website. Um, we'll give you further instructions regarding your life, your, your brand new life in Christ Jesus. For the word says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. There are some things that we can get to you that will start you on your journey with Father where you can build that relationship with him. Um, uh, partners and members of NLOC, uh, we invite you to give. You, you can go out on the website and see those ways that you can do that. Um, and so uh, until the next time, we just pray for you. We pray the wisdom of God of your life. We pray the divine protection of Father over you. Angels of God being camped around about you every place that you go in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. But most of all, Father, we thank you for who you are. Hallelujah. We bless you in Jesus' name. Be blessed tonight as you go about the balance of your week. Amen. Amen.